Joseph! Yes, Bethany? Oh, can you believe Mom? She thinks I have time to read. For fun! Yes. Oh, Joseph, you and Mom, you don't like understand my life. I'm so busy. I have schoolwork. I know this is spring break, and I know I've done a lot of sleeping, but I had to catch up on it. I just have too much to do. Okay, you crazy. <laughs> you know what I need? Yep. A nap. My life would be so much easier if she just had made it a video, not a book. Great, 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 great grandkids. It's me, your great, 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 great grandmother, Lucy Max Smith, here to show you how to kitchen with Lucy Max Smith. So sorry this video is a little behind schedule. Um, if you recall from last week's video, uh, that kind of ended in disaster. Um, so, today I am going to show you how to cook a chicken when you're halfway between Missouri and who knows where our hopefully next destination will be. Uh, so the first thing you're going to need is a chicken. Now to catch a chicken, <laughs> um, catching a chicken is not that hard, just send your three-year-old off to do it. Uh, Benjamin, will you catch me a chicken? Thank you. So after your three-year-old has brought you the chicken, uh, you will need to start a fire. And, oh, you're gonna start, okay, your three-year-old will start the fire. Now, uh, when your water is just about boiling, which ours is, uh, you will take your chicken and you'll need to kill. So you just take one hand above its neck and one hand below its neck and you just ring until you feel the neck break. Okay? And then you'll need to cut a little hole um, and hang it up so that all of the blood can drip. So after that, after our chicken is drained, um, we are gonna need to pluck it. So in order to get the feathers to come out, we need to stick it in a pot of boiling water, and then we'll need to immediately stick it in our pot of freezing cold water. Oh, you can see the feathers are coming off already, and stick it into the cold pot. Okay, and then it should be good to pluck. You just need to pluck it until all of the feathers are gone and you can see the feathers have been coming off already so just keep plucking until the feathers are gone so uh, you can see now on my chicken the spots where there used to be feathers and are now no more feathers why because we plucked it so now you want to take your chicken strips and you want to dip it in your um, butter egg mixture, it's egg mixture, and then put it in your um, bread crumbs. Just get all covered, nice and covered there, and then we're gonna move it over to the frying pan, like so. And here is our fried chicken. Bon appetit. Where did you get that feather? <laughs> and for a more balanced meal, and so you don't get scurvy, you can add vegetables. And with the leftover chicken, you can make um, some chicken noodle soup for your sick husband. In reality, I've grown up on the stories of my ancestors and great-grandparents, and knowing who they are and what they went through has always been really helpful for me. It's been a foundational part of building my character, and I have been able to overcome difficult things and um, become a better person because I know the people from whom I came.